Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide, where today we're here at Ferrari Land, located at Port Aventura World in Spain. I am so excited to get back on Red Force. It's been some time for you, hasn't it, Charlotte? I feel it since 2017. That's so long ago. That's crazy. When we were here last year, you were feeling really ill, weren't you? I was you? So... feeling really poorly, so I just didn't want to do it. So I'm back to give it another go. Oh, really excited. And of course, it is the tallest roller coaster anywhere in Europe. It towers over the park and the surrounding area. In fact, you can see it from our hotel where we're staying down in nearby Salou. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the travel vlog that went on yesterday here on our channel. And yes, we're here at Ferrari Land today. Of course, the main highlight of this park is Red Force. However, they've got some other interesting rides here too. Nothing quite as spectacular as that though, but that's the main event here, oh, isn't I it? I absolutely love Red Force. I can't wait to get back on it. And then following on from that, we're going to be spending two days in Port Aventura Park, the main park here at Port Aventura World. And of course, riding their brand new indoor roller coaster built by Intamin Uncharted. I can't wait to see what it's about. I've sort of stayed spoiler free, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. Well, I've heard a lot of reviews all about it, and lots of them have been mixed, but I'm excited to see what it's like for ourselves and get on there. So that'll be coming up, of course, tomorrow as we make our way into Port Aventura Park. Um, yeah, there's a reason why we thought we'd start here at Ferrari Land today. That's because, obviously, it was our travel day. We got in this afternoon. This park actually only opened at 2 p.m., and it's open until 10. So, yeah, they've changed the opening hours now, which I actually prefer, and it works out great for a travel day, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that works really well for us because we came in like in the afternoon and we can stay till the evening. Yes, yeah, so that's fantastic because it's certainly not a full day park. Yeah. Normally we spend three or four hours in here and obviously it's just gone four o'clock, it's open till 10, so we've got like six hours and also see this park at night for the first time as well as the sun goes down later on. But yeah, it's gonna be a great day. Come and join us. It's Ferrari Land here at Port Aventura. And yeah, it really doesn't seem too busy down here at the entrance of the park. It's been open though for a couple of hours. What's nice actually about getting to this park a little bit later on is not doing that massive stampede uh, down to Red Force. If you get here for opening, uh, they normally put like a rope out, holds you all here, and then it's a massive run down to Red Force, isn't it? So. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad that we haven't got to do that today. Yeah, it's a bit more enjoyable, isn't it, when you can just kind of stroll in like this and, of course, head down there at your own pace. But it's a personal choice, isn't it, if you get here for opening or not. Um, yeah, this just worked out really good for us today. It is a small park. It opened back in 2017. Um, it has had an expansion um, over a few years ago when they put in some kids' rides and another roller coaster for Junior Red Force. Um, but, yeah, not nothing like massive. You know, it really could do with another one or two big attractions in this park, really. However, it has got Red Force just there. Look at it go. And yeah, I remember coming here on opening day. Got to be one of the most crazy and unorganized days I've ever had in a theme park that was 2017. Uh, I'll always remember that. But it was great to say we were here on the uh, opening day for this park. And yeah, all the landscaping and everything's all grown really nice over the past few years. You know, I just hope that it gets an expansion at some point in the near future. I think for me, maybe Uncharted, I know it wouldn't have worked with that theme in this park, but maybe the indoor roller coaster should have come to this park, really. It should have come to here so Lisa can add a little bit more because really, even if Got one big standout ride in here. Yeah, it would have worked well in this park. I know it would have had to have been a different theme and um, to fit with Ferrari, but still, I would have probably made the next big investment here um, instead of over in Port Aventura Park, that of course is already home to lots of fantastic attractions. Here you've got the Ferrari Experience, there's a simulator ride in there, and also a flying theatre as well. And yeah, lots of air conditioning, which we certainly need. It is very, very hot today. Are these temperatures, whoo, we are baking. But yeah, let's make our way down to Red Force, Fiorza Rosa, as they say here in Spain. Oh, and there it is, a little bit closer up to make our way down here to the entrance. It's advertised an hour looking at the board just there, which I don't think is too bad, really. I reckon it's running two trains. Operations at Port Aventura are never normally amazing. However, you never know, there might have been some improvements on that since last time we were here. I also love the little grandstand at the top, just over there as well, to get some great views looking over at the ride. And all the buildings are really pretty around here as well. Which is fantastic. But yeah, an hour away. I don't think that's too bad, do you, Charlotte, really? Really? For a coaster of this size? Yeah, definitely. 367 foot tall, top speed of 111 miles an hour. And here it is, the main entrance. Time to challenge the wind. I'm not too sure about the slogan. It sounds a bit cheesy. I'm not really a big fan of the name either. I do prefer calling it uh, Fiorza Rosa, to be honest. Here it is. Let's go and make our way in. So you've got three main covered over queue areas here at Red Force. And yeah, it's not filled the first one down there at the bottom. This one's only a little bit filled. And then the one at the top there. So yeah, an hour, maybe a little bit less than that possibly. Depends how good them operations are. It has also got a single rider queue, but you have to queue up in this first 
and then join the single rider later on, so it doesn't really make much sense, doesn't really save a lot of time. Well, I've got to say, operations seem pretty good so far. We've only been waiting about 15 minutes. We've already done all that down there. We've came up this way and done most of this cattle pen now as well. Yeah, trains have been coming out pretty quickly, which is great to see. So we've waited 35 minutes for our ride here on Red Force. Two trains in operation, not too bad at all. We've been getting them sent out pretty fast, which is great to see. Unfortunately, you can't wait for your preferred rows. We can't wait for the front, can we, Charlotte? Oh, no. It's well, a shame. It yeah, I do wish they'd have a front row queue. I don't really understand it when they don't, to be honest, because uh, you don't mind waiting as many trains as you need to for a front. But still, we're getting on Red Force, and yeah, really excited to ride this beast of a coaster again. Get ready for launch! Force. Oh, I tell you what, the launch on there is fantastic. <laughs> Not as good as the accelerator launches with the cable, but still absolutely fantastic. Wow. Love the lap bars on here as well. getting back on Red Force. It really is a fantastic coaster. Listen to it ripping down the launch just there. Because I hadn't been on it for so long, I was expecting to come out the station and then sort of stop and then go into it, but you literally just go straight into it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, that's the thing. There's no kind of build up no. or anything there with traffic lights. You're literally straight into that launch and yeah, just under 112 miles an hour LSM launch. And of course, it's one of those that really builds up the speed throughout, doesn't it? Uh, you get down to the end there of the launch track before you start to go up the tower and you really feel the G's on your face, don't oh, you? I just absolutely love it it's fantastic it's a brilliant ride and like i said just on the brake run it's the lap bar restraints that really make that coaster as well uh, really comfortable i mean this train design on here that intervin do is phenomenal it really so is comfy. oh it's fantastic and yeah the ride itself is great going over the top hat you go over at just a nice speed as well and then of course you whip down the other side with some awesome views not just over the park but the whole area and that's the thing it's the location what makes that ride as well seeing the sea and seeing port aventura park and i love that coaster so much it's a brilliant ride towards the back it does have a little bit of a rattle but it's nothing too concerning really i want to go on the front row because i want to wear the goggles oh you might get it by a pigeon though if you do yeah, that yeah i know remember that viral <laughs> video when it first opened but uh yeah front row is good i've had a few front row rides on there over the years but it's one of them they won't let you wait for it i do think it's a shame uh they especially really should just have a front row queue it doesn't affect the operation at all if people are willing to wait an extra train just or three four it. trains let them do it i don't understand it they also do the same in port aventura park um maybe Maybe it's something to do with their express system because you can pay extra to have front rows in Port Aventura Park but um, obviously there's nobody else there um, in the queue for like Shambhala uh, or whatever in the fast track queue then yeah you will be able to ride the front but it's one of them it's very rare to get front rows at this park really oh, no. but so uh, yeah it's a phenomenal ride great to get on it oh I know after missing out of course on the King the Car oh, for I've you oh well, we'll get drags for though next year yes. whatever they're doing to it this is the reimagining cannot wait to see it. i'm sure it's going to feature lsms of some form and that's the future now for these launch coasters the hydraulic cable launches are being started to be phased out now you don't see new ones of those opening it's lsms and as much as they don't have as much kick they're still fantastic and of course they're much safer and reliable too it's 30 degrees celsius today and that ride just keeps operating with the heat fantastic Something that's helped so much with this park since it opened seven years ago is the landscaping really starting to take over now, which is great. I remember when it opened, it just looked so barren. I mean, that's always the case though, isn't it? With brand new rides and areas that have heavy landscaping. And of course, this was just a car park before. It was a huge transformation, uh, which is fantastic. And yeah, you've got all these lovely facades around here, lots of statues. And yeah, this is actually the back 
of the building that's got the flying theatre and that simulator ride in just there as well. But so we've got a little shop over here called the Ice Cream Box. Then we're gonna have an ice cream and then we're gonna go and join the queue again for another ride on Red Force because it's the main event in this part. Let's make the most of it and have another go. waited 30 minutes for another ride there on Red Force and you know what that coaster it really is fantastic. Oh, I absolutely love it, it's fantastic. If you've never been out here and experienced it, definitely do it. It's such a great ride. Yeah, it really is. Fantastic that. And yeah, it looks a little bit stormy actually. It did say that we might have some storms this evening. So I'm glad that we've got two rides on there just in case. Um yeah, that was brilliant that was. And we ended up on row five again there, didn't we? <laughs> I would have liked it if we could have had a front row, but it is what it is, isn't it? I'm sure we'll get another ride in on there, though, hopefully, a night ride. We've got the show going on just down here as well, which is great. Chris, you've got the stage with the entertainment. That's something that Port Aventura do probably better than any other theme park. It is the entertainment. There's always stuff going on, which is fantastic. Yeah, this is the Ferrari Land song. I remember when this got released. There they all are. Now, if you don't fancy taking on Red Force just up there, you can ride Junior Red Force right next door here. I do like how they've got this. So yeah, this opened one year after the park initially opened. So yeah, this was a 2018 edition here to Ferrari Land. And yeah, the second coaster in this park, there is just the two. Like I said, I would like to see some more expansion here in the future. But yeah, it's nice how they did put in a little Junior coaster. SPF Visa manufactured this. It's a good fun little ride. Nothing spectacular, but it does its job. You know, it's a little family coaster just in here. And I do really like the train design. The Zero car looks awesome. And of course, Red Force Towers over it just at the top here as well. Oh, blimey, that was slow over the top. Thought that was going to be a rollback. Oh, that was really slow, that was. That's the thing with the LSMs. Uh, they get hot, and especially with it being so hot today. I can certainly mean that a rollback could happen, you know, but uh, yeah, fantastic. I mean, if it does have a rollback, it's all part of the design. It'll just come back down and they'll reset it and send it off again. But uh, yeah, there you go. Great to come and ride this again. It is a monster, it really is. make our way inside then now to experience Flying Dreams which is the flying theatre attraction located inside the Ferrari Experience building just here. But yeah, you can see really they've only got five main rides in this park. This doesn't show the flat rides on here but yeah, you've only got five main rides. They're advertising Red Force on 50 and as we know we've not been waiting uh, much past half hour which has been great. Racing Legends you've got um, which of course is the other one in there. You've got Thrill Towers which is the shot tower and then you've got Flying Dreams on 30. Biggest queue on the park is the little car ride. Probably. Yeah that's crazy but yeah Racing Legends that's the simulator ride which is also inside here. It shares the same sort of queue line. Yeah, let's go have a look inside here. So yeah the entrance to Racing Legends is on the left. And then you've got Flying Dreams here on the right. And if you are getting a little bit hot during your visit to Ferrari Land, I tell you what, this is the place to be. A massive air-conditioned indoor queue line with projection mapping. Let's go from around the world adventure with Ferrari. It is awesome in here with all the lighting, the projections. Massive. A lot of projection mapping just there. And yeah, queues really aren't too bad at all. Yes, yeah, so that's all the line for Racing Legends, the simulator, and this for the Flying Theatre.
cool lighting and cool AC. <laughs> I waited 20 minutes there for Flying Dreams and yeah we've just gone through that first pre-show, only a short one, and then you make your way into the main one just up here, or getting on the ride. Lots of cool use of projections throughout here. footage there from Flying Dreams, of course the Flying Theatre here in Ferrari Land. And yeah, it starts off of course with a couple of pre-shows, uh, with some nice projections, telling you how you're going to go on this journey with a Ferrari car around the world, and that's really the storyline behind it. Um, you sit there and you're watching this little red Ferrari go around all these different countries, aren't you on there? Yeah, I think the video is quite good on there, like going through New York and seeing London, which is quite nice. Yeah, that's the thing, you go through lots of different European countries, and of course over to the States as well, which is great. And yeah, it's really nicely put together. I think it's got some good transitions. I like how you go up into the clouds and the beams of light. Sometimes the transitions can get a bit distracting and take away from it on some of those. Soaring, of course, the original. Uh, the transitions aren't the best on there. Uh, they're actually better on this, which is fantastic. It's got some lovely smells as well, hasn't oh, it? Oh, it smells so good. As you go into like the different countries, everything's got like a different smell, which is great. Yeah, there's maybe four or five different ones in there, which is fantastic. And also, of course, at the end, you come into Port Ventura, and then, of mm -hmm. course, yeah, you see um, the fountain on the entrance plaza, and then Ferrari Line. 
end. It doesn't end with fireworks. It could have done, but a lot of them. But normally, uh, always yeah, do. Normally, always do. Like Volatarium, Europa Park, Soaring, quite a few others. They end with fireworks. But uh, no, with this one, it doesn't. It just kind of fades out. And of course, you get the Ferrari logo. But yeah, it's really nice. I mean, flying theatres aren't my favourite attraction in general. However, um, it's a nice an, an indoor attraction at this park. You've got to only go back like before Ferrari Land opened. There was hardly any indoor attractions across Port Aventura. So it's so nice how they've got the two dark rides in here. Of course, they put the Sesamo Aventura dark ride in and now Uncharted. So yeah, they've really, these past kind of seven years, been a big focus on dark rides, which this park really needed, which you know. Which is really good to see. I mean, flying theatres aren't for us, but people was absolutely loving it in there. Yeah, and I think it depends on how many you've done and also where you sit as well. We were quite lucky that time. We was on the bottom level, in the middle. So if you're in the middle, you get some great views. Whereas if you're on the ends, um, not quite so much. And also on the top, on those versions isn't great because the screen just ends, it kind of cuts off, um, which isn't ideal. But uh, no, I enjoyed it. I like the music on there. I like how there's no talking throughout it. It's just a nice kind of orchestral suite. And uh, that really makes it for me. And whilst we're in this part of the park, we're going to give Racing Legends a go. So that's the simulator ride located next door where you sit in the F1 car. And yeah, journey through time with Ferrari. Let's go and experience it. Oh, back to the air conditioning. <laughs> well, yeah, as you can see, we're now just waiting on the left-hand side just here. There's the Ferrari up the top, the F1 car. Let's go and experience this. Racing legends! <laughs> Very dramatic music, I love it. See, so yeah, we waited about 30 minutes there as advertised for racing legends just here. And yeah, some more awesome use of projections down here in the queue line. Let's go and get an RF1 car. So we just watched a short pre-show with some backstory for the attraction. And yeah, we've been batched down here at number three. Watch another video and then the doors will open and we'll go on. Yeah, we've got the 3D glasses just here as well. <laughs> These have got to be the biggest 3D glasses we've ever seen. Look at them, they're so heavy as well. Oh, I've got double glasses. <laughs> there from our ride on Racing Legends and yeah there's a reason why I only put some highlights in there a couple of small clips that's because that attraction isn't great at all in my opinion um, of course you've got the simulator system itself um, that you sit on seatbelt comes across it lifts up a little bit and kind of moves side to side but there's just not a lot of movement in it and as you saw in the footage there's a big bar in front of you on there as well the thing is it just hardly moves and it's just so repetitive it's the same thing it's a bit like Mario Kart but you're in like a car that's slightly moving yeah it's not ideal that I don't think the audio quality is great either and of course the storyline like Charlotte said it does repeat itself quite a lot um, because actually you just kind of see in similar clips I, I know you thing. yeah I know you're going to different races around the world and stuff um, but yeah like it's just very similar the stats come up not a huge fan that's an attraction that I could easily skip in this park because we've got the full evening here tonight and um, we've not got tickets for Port Ventura Park I thought let's do it you know I've not done it for a while um, but yeah it's nothing spectacular that at all it's one of those that uh, yeah if it's got a massive queue uh, you've got limited time don't wait more than like 30 minutes for that no. at all Definitely not. Yeah, or maybe even skip it. Like it's not a fantastic it's attraction not. there. It, you know, I, I have a sign. You know, when I'm on a ride and I'm thinking of something else, that for me is a sign that that attraction just isn't very good. I was sort of switching off. I was. I was thinking, let's go and get something to eat whilst <laughs> I was on there. And that's a sign of not a very good attraction. But uh, we went on there and shared a little bit of footage for you.
Well, we've come back out of lovely blue skies again now. I don't know if this storm is going to come in or not. It did look a bit stormy earlier on and said that it might be. Yeah, it seems like quite a nice evening now, which is good. It's a lot cooler though now, and that's the great thing about that. The best thing is the air conditioning. And to be honest, the queue line, I actually find everything in the queue line more impressive than on the actual ride itself. The flying theatre though is definitely worth going on, 100%. Uh, but yeah, in terms of food options, you've not got loads in this park. There is a big sit-down restaurant down by Red Force. Then you've got a couple of the quick service areas, uh, including Pit Lane just over there. Oh, it looks awesome on the skyline there, doesn't it? And of course you've got Thrill Towers next door. Pair of SNS shot and drop towers. Yeah, they're not fantastic those, unfortunately. You know, we might give them a go there this evening. You get some good views from up there. Of course, the main event right here, Red Force. Hey. With pointing out in terms of food in this park, they tend to open some bits, then close other bits. When we walked past here earlier, this was shut. It's now open for the evening. Then the main takeout one at the top, that's now closed, but was open earlier. And then the uh, dine-in restaurant table service, that one, um, it seems to be open and then closed again, and then open later. So yeah, a little bit confusing, kind of opening and closing food uh, units in here. But uh, yeah, this looks good. I've got to say, food prices though, are pretty reasonable actually. Um, for being in a theme park, which is good. Chicken fingers and fries just there, 7.95. So yeah, that's not too bad at all. Oh, look at that, five euros 10 for a nice Oscar Mayer hot dog XL just there. We'll sit here and enjoy it. And of course, taking the stunning views of Red Force as the sun goes down. Oh, delicious that was. And I tell you what, Red Force is going over that top pack quite slow. I keep thinking it's going to roll back. Another Ferrari on display just over there. And yeah, of course, the Coliseum just here too, which does look fantastic. Really nice round here. Feel like I'm over in Venice. Never been to Venice before though, but I reckon this is what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice down here. And of course, you've got that area where you get some fantastic views. Looking at Red Force from up there. The Grandstand. Yeah, some of the shots you saw earlier in this video from at the top just there as well. Yeah, that's that other restaurant that I was talking about earlier on. So yeah, that's a fancy kind of sit-down, dine-in restaurant, table service. Never actually been in there and ate, but it looks very nice on the outside. Beautiful building. Yeah, and all the theming around here is great. Of course, we've shown you quite a lot of attractions here. However, we're going to show you some of the flat rides now that there is for kids. Family attractions, of course, which are really important in a park like this as well. And yeah, there's one of them, you wouldn't think it, it looks like a gift shop from over here. But yeah, where that Ferrari sign is, that's actually a little ride in there. So we'll just show you that. And you got this lovely statue just over here as well. One of the highlights of the park for many people, just over here. It's always on point, this statue. Please come and see. <laughs> and here it is, it's called Junior Championship. You like the statue? <laughs> Quite a nice mural in here too on the wall. Much quieter on an evening. Obviously it's quite weird actually being in this park like, on a night like this. I'm just not used to it normally. It's like shooting at four or five o'clock. Yeah, I remember at one point it was actually 11.4, like, yeah. which was crazy. So but... It's nice to actually be in here on an evening. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people have probably left to go and have dinner and maybe go into next door for Fiesta Ventura. Of course, the big lake show that we're going to be watching tomorrow, which we're really excited for. Another Ferrari just over there too. And what's awesome about the LSM launch on Red Force is that it actually sounds like a Ferrari as well. Really cool. Yeah, oh, it's really cool. Yeah, it's very authentic. Oh, look at this. Yeah, it's really filtered out. This is the time to come into this park to get some re-rides. And yeah, we just thought we'd show you some of the kids' rides that they've got down here as well. So yeah, this came as another phase. Crazy to think, really, that none of these were here when this park opened. Do you remember 2017? Like not in existence. Yeah, like there wasn't much at all looking oh, about, was there? Yeah. And there's still not loads and loads now, but uh, yeah, you got Flying Race just over here, a nice little plane ride. And there's a drop tower next to it just over here too. Yeah, and there it is, the nice little drop tower. All this landscape in there has grown so much and it's made the park even better now than it was before, which is good to see. I think the show's about to start again, actually. This is quite a quirky little thing, isn't it? Two of them back to back. Good fun little ride. It's one of them a bit like the Zamperla Nebula where you know it looks funky off ride, but yeah, on ride doesn't really do that much, but still nice and fun. I do like the eyes there is on the top just up there as well. And yeah, that's right underneath Red Force, and this is the place to come to get them awesome views. I mean, look at that towering over the skyline. It is incredible when you look all the way up to the top just there. The third tallest roller coaster 
anywhere in the world. And yeah, we'll definitely have another ride on there. We might be able to squeeze a couple in, you never know. It's gone much quieter now. 30 minute advertised wait, but it was overestimated earlier. So maybe it'll be quieter than that. Yeah, how funky is that? It's quite different. And yeah, the ride I showed you just was called Crazy Pistons just over here. There you go, what a name, Crazy Pistons. And the final little flat ride to show you just here is called Champions Race. Little car ride that spins around there. And of course, you've got the cup just in the middle. Oh, look at that, fantastic. The energy of that ride in the park, fantastic. It really is. But yeah, we've got the little car ride. So we're going to head over there and have a look. It's not rolled back, has it, Charlotte? No. <laughs> oh, look at that now. I tell you what, it's nice to be in this park as the sun's going down and just see that silhouette, like gorgeous. And just thought we'd come and show you up on the grandstand here. Some of the shots you saw earlier on were taken from this area, but I realised I didn't actually show you the grandstand area, because it's really nice up here. Hey, perfect. Watching Red Force up here as well, which is fantastic. And yeah, they've got the screen, which has actually got live cameras on there as well, which is pretty cool. There you go, you can see it coming back down from the tower. It all zooms in on the top as well. Hey, that's, that's a really nice feature. Yeah, this is great. You can probably see a couple of hundred people just underneath here, and it gets you out the shade, out of the sun, sorry, for a little bit as well, and in the shade, not out the shade. You don't want that. No one is this hot. <laughs> oh, I tell you why. It's so nice just watching Red Force. There he goes again with the sun going down, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, these massive tall coasters look great, don't they, with the oh, sunset. Absolutely fantastic, because they just stand out so much. Gorgeous, I love the track colour as well for this, fantastic. Uh, anyway, we're going on the little car ride around here now. Yeah, queue time's really quieting down now, which is good. And here it is, Marinello Grand Race. Let's go and give this a go and take you along. I just can't stop showing you shots of Red Force. <laughs> just stunning to look at. Let's see how slow it was going over the top then. Here's the cars that were going on. Yeah, you can see Salou over there in the distance. Like I said, if you haven't already, make sure you check out the travel vlog. Really nice, easy flight from Liverpool to Reyes Airport. And when you land at Reyes, you can actually see Red Force, Hurricane Condor, and of course, Shambhala on the Skyline as well. And I've got all your Port Aventura classics and the new Uncharted coming up for you all over the next couple of days. We've got two more vlogs from Port Aventura for you all. We're just getting started. And I actually like how we started here at Ferrari Land. I think that makes it, you know, starting here and then building up for the main event tomorrow, which is gonna be awesome. Hey, you like these? Yeah, yeah man, I might get a yellow one, Charlotte. There is a yellow one somewhere. We waited about 15 minutes there for our ride here on the cars and off we go. See how they're electric, these. Charlotte's driving. <laughs> you got your foot on the pedal down there yeah, as well, have you? Does that have a brake or not? Just accelerator? Yeah, look at the sunset. Oh, that is beautiful over there. Oh, what are you doing? What was that Stopped brake in there? Stopped auto brake. Oh, here we go. That's what she all says. There we go. I've got my foot right down on the pedal and it's just stopping. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That's it. We're going We're now. Off. We're zooming now. Great view of Thrill Towers though. Oh, look at Fjords of Rosa. Beautiful. What are you laughing at? Fjords of Rosa. Uh, you know, it's not got a height beacon, which I find really yeah, surprising. I know, it's I mean, not, that's I all it is. It doesn't have a height beacon. There you go. It'd be great if it came now, wouldn't it? But look at that. Fantastic. Wow, it is a structure. It just really impressed me, you know, like these monster coasters, like building them. Fantastic. Of course, technically, it's a giga coaster because it's not it's 400 coming. feet. Here it is. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Well, yeah, of course, set up like a Stratocoaster with the design. Well, yeah, it is a giga. Oh, what, what are you it doing? Again. It's like it's auto braking. Do you think it gets too fast and then yeah. starts to slow? To be honest, I remember this happening before. We've got a car coming in behind us here. Hey! <laughs> no bumping, please. I think it's really fast. Oh, there's Shammy B over there. Oh, Shambhala. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, Hello. Steer the wheel. I, I'm not driving. Charlotte is, it's apparently. Gonna, <laughs> We're gonna, the auto brake is going to kick in now. We're yeah, building up too much speed here. I'm waiting. Oh, it's dangerous levels of speed. I mean, we're in a Ferrari for God's sake. But <laughs> oh, that's a nice view, that. It's worth coming on this for these views. I mean, I know you can get close to the coaster down here, but you get even closer to the track. 
from down here. Look at that. I'm loving being in this part with the sun going down though. I don't think we're gonna get a night ride. I mean, there's like 35, 40 minutes to go until park closed. I was hoping for a night ride on Red Force, but you know, it'd be a good sunset ride. Would have been better with a bit more theming around here. You all right there? Squealing. Squealing. Yeah, one day I reckon Autopia at the Disney parks will be like this. Instead of them actually being like gasoline powered, they'll change them to electric like this. Yeah, I could have done with a bit more theming. Saying that, it does look like a racetrack. And do you really have theming on a racetrack? You don't. No. I remember seeing the original concept art for this park when they released it all, probably like 2014, 15. And we all thought there was going to be like high powered go-karts. How wrong were we? <laughs> also, it showed originally the drop towers on the side um, of the tower for Red Force and not as a separate structure. Personally though, I prefer it like they are off to the side. Even though they're not very good drop towers, I'll probably give them a miss actually. Um, but yeah, like, you know, the reason it showed them on there, like King Dakar. However, I'm pleased they didn't go for that. This looks a bit tight, doesn't it, down here? Needs a bit of TLC. Oh! Oh my God, I went jolting forward. So I had a really itchy ankle and I needed to scratch it. Oh, so you took your foot off the accelerator. <laughs> Dangerous driving here, folks. Dangerous. <laughs> I I don't feel safe in this car no, with Charlotte. I had a really itchy ankle and I needed to scratch. See, this is why I did all the driving on the USA road trip. You say, like, it was all me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can drive. You can drive. We never see you driving, though, do we? But I can drive. Have the viewers ever seen you driving? Like I don't that? think so. <laughs> wow! Look at that. Yours are rosy. Oh, gorgeous all the building over here. They've got like a little Ferrari exhibition in there as well. But they don't let you take any photos or videos in there, which I don't really know why. Oh, blimey. <laughs> like four minutes into our thrilling adventure. Will Towers. There we go. Coming back in. Oh, that's it, I think. Oh, we broke down, haven't we? What's going on? Oh, that's it. Oh, we're crawling along. <laughs> really weird. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Get your hands on the wheel. <laughs> okay, there's no wonder they're doing some maintenance in there. Oh, oh they didn't I thought it was the lightning fire. then. Oh, that's going to be a bad wall. I'm even smiling. <laughs> well, there you go. Charlotte's wonderful driving just over there. Thanks for the journey, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right, that is. But yeah, the ride system itself feels a bit cheap, a bit budget, you know. I feel like they could have done a lot better with that. Uh, but still, it's something else here in the park, which is fantastic. Anyway, we've got 40 minutes to go until ride close. And uh, yeah, it's 20 past nine now. And literally, Red Force has got about a 15 minute queue. So we're just going to get a few rides on here now. Probably two, but we might get three. You never know. Uh, the operation has been pretty good on here today, which has been great. And yeah, really wrong. We waited in this cattle pen, a bit of the one just down there. And literally, yeah, it's just a here now, right by the single rider line. Yeah, it's really weird how they've got this placement just here. Because obviously, yeah, you kind of have to queue up and then come and join the single rider here. It kind of splits off, which is very strange. But uh, there we go. Right, let's go and have another couple of rides here on Red Force. Just in the station then, waiting to get on. Think it's gone down temporarily. However, a member of staff just been down and flicked a switch on the side of the train. And yeah, all these lights have just come on underneath. That's the thing, never seen this park in the dark before. Cool how it's got the strip lights on the side. That'll look awesome going around the track. Oh, we just had two more rides on the absolutely awesome Red Force. And yeah, it's not pitch black, but still the darkest rides I've had on there. So yeah, it's fantastic. Getting a couple more rides in. And yeah, it's five to ten, so I've got time for one more. So I'm going to try and get that in if I can do. And of course, make the most of it. Why not? But yeah, it's been fantastic. We've had four rides today on Red Force. Certainly makes up for, uh, yeah, not getting on it last time for you, Charlotte. Oh, no. Yeah, fantastic. Look at that with the sky, all the nice lighting. And yeah, them lights on the train look fantastic. Show you a bit more footage of that to make our way down here. Yeah. I tell you what, it's absolutely deserted around here now. There's a couple of people coming in for one last ride on Red Force. Let's make the most of it. Yeah. Hey, 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 five rides later, we got it, row one. <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> right, let's go on. Fun row, we'll take you on again with this one. Let's go and ride Red Force in the near dark conditions here at Port Aventura World. Here we go. Front row. You feel like G-Force on the front, I tell you. Woo! 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 Oh, that was 
awesome. Oh. Oh, well, I've been wanting that all afternoon and evenings. So I'm so pleased we got it. Front row there on Red Force. You really do feel the force more on there, don't you? On the it front? is so forceful on the front, but the goggles did take it away a little bit for me because it was quite tight and it was a bit scratched on the front. Yeah, I agree. I'm not a big fan of wearing the goggles on there. However, it's better than uh, getting hit by a pigeon, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you certainly don't want that. There was a viral video like when it opened and someone was getting whacked with a pigeon. So that's why they have it on there, safety reasons. But uh, yeah, it does take away from it a little bit. I actually preferred riding it in the daytime. I've always wanted to do it at night it was a great experience but i think it's actually better in the daytime I think so too you know well. you get to see all the lights and everything which is really nice but you feel the height more in the daytime um which is fantastic you can't take it as much in when it's night time yeah that's the thing but uh, it was good to do it though i mean got a little bit of footage there it didn't come out amazing because you actually have a bright white light shining yeah, at you, you for the on-ride camera which films you as you're going round. that's the same on shambhala kind of takes away from the night rides a little bit because you've got a really bright led and you kind of saw that in the bottom of the gopro clip there i'm sure um but no i really enjoyed it it was great getting on there it means we've had five rides on there today, which is fantastic. Oh, there's Hurricane Condor all lit up at night. And yeah, that park's open until 10.30. Really excited for tomorrow. And of course, we got the nighttime show as well, Fiesta Ventura, which I've not seen for years. That's going to be great. I was going to show you some of the merch, but yeah, the shop's actually closed. To be honest, though, we're not missing out on much because it's very expensive um, in the gift shop here. Uh, of course, you're paying for the name, aren't you, with it being Ferrari? Oh my God, look at the disco fountains just out here. <laughs> Are they supposed to be doing that or not? I feel like they're not supposed to be flashing like that, but still, it looks quite pretty still. Well, there you go. That brings us to the end of our day at Ferrari Land at Port Aventura World. It is a park that still relies on its main signature coaster, uh, Red Force. And you know what? It is a brilliant ride. So I'm pleased we managed to get five goes on there. We thought it might have been busier, didn't we, as well? Yeah, I was expecting to maybe get like one or two goes. And I was expecting it to have like a two hour queue, but it's not been that busy at all. And we've waited that long for it before, haven't yeah. we? You know, and it does get really busy here. I tell you what, though, I never thought I'd say this at Port Aventura, but the operations have been really good in there today. Like, fantastic. I really like this part but sometimes the operations can be frustrating what we've seen today has been great i mean they've been getting them trains dispatched really quick and even on the other rides i remember the dark rides in that park waiting ages it took like 20 minutes sometimes in between groups for the flying theater we get getting people through every five ten minutes which is fantastic so overall operations have been better than i was expecting today i was really impressed like they was getting those trains out in red Force, which was really good and that's mean the queue's been quite low yeah it was nice to see a little bit of the entertainment in there as well which is good it's a nice park it's nothing special spectacular it's still only a half day park however at least it has got um, red force which is fantastic it really is a brilliant ride it's worth going in there for that you couldn't come to port aventura world and not go in there and ride that beast it's a park that still needs expansion like i say i feel like the indoor coaster that they built in the main park would have been in the, better in there but of course it would have needed a different theme but maybe they've got further expansion plans for ferrari land i'm not too sure but uh, it certainly needs more in there still to give it that main draw however i've enjoyed doing it as like a start of our trip today because normally I want to go in there during a Port Aventura day. I'm kind of like going in there for Red Force and thinking, you know, I just want to go back in the main park. So I'm really pleased that we, uh, you know, have done that today. And then we've got two full days in Port Aventura now. It just works out much better just having that little time on the evening to come in in the afternoon as well. And then just go in the two days at Port Aventura. Yeah, definitely. The opening hours are much better in my opinion. I liked that park at night. It was better at night. I liked seeing the lights around the park and on the coaster as well, which was fantastic. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll carry on doing this later opening. So I think it works. I know in off-peak even this year, it's been open at like 4 till 10, um, which I think is much better. That's actually been open later during off-peak than the main park, which I also think is a good idea. So fingers crossed we'll keep doing that in the future. We had a great visit, and of course, coming up tomorrow, day one vlog from Port Aventura. Hey, there's Woody Woodpecker there behind us. We'll be heading in and experiencing their brand new ride, Uncharted. And uh, yeah, it's an indoor coaster. It looks fantastic. Really interested to give it a ride and see what we think to it. But uh, that leaves us with one final thing to say get out there and keep on riding see you tomorrow